Hello everybody, welcome to Kerbal Space Program and welcome to another aircraft tutorial. Uh, this one's designed to follow on from the one I did a few weeks ago, but this time we're throwing a bit of BD Armoury into the mix. Uh, once again, this one's more designed with the beginner in mind, but uh, hopefully there's the old tip bit in there that the more intermediate, or dare I say it, advanced player might find useful. So this is the craft I developed in the last tutorial, which I dubbed the Whirlwind. Uh, looks a little bit like the English Electric Lightning, but uh, a very simple craft quite manoeuvrable, uh, and in today's tutorial we're going to arm it and we're going to fight it, so uh, let's get cracking. So we're in the space plane hangar with the Whirlwind and uh, we are going to get this thing ready for combat. First thing we want to do, before you do anything else, if you're using BD Armoury, first thing you're going to want to do is get a weapon manager. I'm just going to put it on the bottom and at the back there. Uh, I want to put it on this little segment here for reasons that will become obvious later and there's not really much room on the top. Weapon manager, you need one of these, well I suppose you might be able to map certain things to hotkeys but basically without without a weapon manager you're not really going to be able to do anything and that's normally located at the bottom of this little um, BD armory section. Uh, also because we're going to be wanting the AI to take control of these at some point I'm going to find the AI pilot flight computer, don't confuse that with the surface operation driver. Get that, I'm just going to put that just in front. So there we go. We can use the uh, use the weaponry, we can uh, let the AI uh, fly it as well. Now let's arm it. So uh, we're going to start fairly simply on this. I'm just going to start... is it towards the bottom, I think? Yes, I'm going to get the hidden Vulcans. Turn on symmetry. I'm going to put a pair of those either side like that. Lovely stuff. So our craft has weapons. Now we're going to need to give that some ammunition. The Vulcans use 20mm ammunition, so I'm going to grab one of these 20 mil ammo boxes and I'm going to put it, I'm going to connect it to the cockpit, seg cockpit segment just there, like that. Um, and of course that's going to look messy so I'm going to, uh, going to use the move tool to clip it into the, into the fuselage. Now the reason I've placed them like here just on, on that overlap between these, uh, between the fuselage, se fuselage segment and this fuel segment is so that once I have actually clipped them in, they're not lost forever. Uh, so if I wanted to get at those, I could just pull this off, and there they are, accessible for me to pull out. If I wanted to change, if I change the weaponry, I want to change the um, change the ammunition as well. That means they're hidden, but they're still accessible. So right, we have a craft that is armed and uh, ready to fight. So let's go. Uh, Let's go and see how it gets on. So I've deployed the Whirlwind. Uh, I used Vessel Mover to just uh, move it from the run runway over here. I also used Vessel Mover to spawn in another Whirlwind over there, just facing away from us. Um, if you don't have Vessel Mover, it's kind of a must-have to set up any kind of complex scenarios like this. Otherwise, it gets very, very long and tedious. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, just in case you don't have the mod. But anyway, with the weapon manager installed, we can click this and we have our little control panel. We can also bring up vessel switcher there and we can switch between our craft. I'm going to go and put our second whirlwind in a different team by clicking this button here. Lovely stuff. I'm going to get their engine started. Now, an aircraft that has its engine started, I could uh, activate the autopilot either by clicking this button actually going to the autopilot and clicking the activate pilot there. Uh, now normally that will just uh, will just cause the aircraft just to take off and circle around its point of origin. Um, that is assuming guard modes off but um, more on that later. If you don't want the aircraft to take off immediately, if you want it to wait, uh, say if you've got a scenario, you want it to wait until another aircraft gets within um, visual range, you can click standby mo mode and that'll stop the aircraft from taking off, except in those circumstances. But we don't want to do that right now. We've got the engine going. We're just going to click the autopilot to uh, get that on. And that's going to take off and do its own thing. In the meantime, I'm going to do the same with this craft here. But I'm going to control it. So we want brakes off, throttle up. 
lovely stuff. Just going to click here to bring up the weapons. So we see our Vulcan here. I'm not going to click that just yet. It's a little trigger button. You won't need it uh, with guns. You will need it with missiles. Just to press that to arm the trigger. But as I said, you won't need that with guns. I think we can ease off on the throttle here a bit. Let's get the landing gear up. Now this craft isn't going to really do anything except circle around because guard mode isn't on. Guard mode and um, the AI, or the autopilot, they're kind of separate systems in a sense. I mean, they do work together in this case in some cases, but the guard mode does the weapons, the pilot does most of the autopilot tasks. So uh, if I was to turn on guard mode, that would change the behavior of the aircraft. It makes a beeline for me. Let's get the Vulcans. Oh, no, I'm not doing very well there. Just to fire the guns, I'm just pressing the left mouse button. And if the uh, if the guns are selected, it will fire those. Let's fire up the engines a bit more. As we come around, you can see this little indicator there. Oh! I am not doing too well here. Just a little indicator that tells you where you should be shooting in the case of a moving target. Um, now, I would try and sort of... Oh. Coming in for a joust. Oh, just managed to scorch him. Now, I uh, I would normally let this run and just click the, uh, click the guard mode on here. But um, I tried that a little earlier. And these craft, they're very evenly matched and it just went... And on for an age, so I'm just going to um, present a relatively easy target to the other whirlwind, and it manages to dispatch me with ease. So that is an aircraft armed with guns, but uh, there's a lot more to BD Armory than that. Let's go. Uh, let's go and take a look. So we're back in the space plane hangar, and now we are going to talk about missiles. But before we do that, we're going to make some adjustments to this craft. I'm just going to take off the rear section there and the wings and put them to one side because I want to put a radar on this thing. So we're going to get rid of this uh, fuel section and we're going to get a radome. Normally I'd use this kind of radome for most of my craft, but um, I don't want to spoil the look of that uh, that nose cone. So we're going to get the inline radome. I'm just going to put that on the back there. And because that's a little bit shorter and I want to keep it as close to the original length as possible, I'm going to put a little fuel tank on the back there. Let's uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. We're not going to need the oxidizer. Just get rid of that like that. Reattach you. Put symmetry on. Make sure we got snapping on. There we go, and we have our craft back, but with a radar this time. And radar is going to allow us to uh, to use radar guided missiles. So I'm just going to turn the craft over like that, and now we are going to want some missile pylons just here in the BD Armory section towards the top. Let's go, let's try and orient you correctly. One there, that's going to need a little bit of finagling. There we go, that's one pair, and let's get another pair just inside it. Just bring the move tool up. And let's just bring you up to match the other one. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we've got these four missile pylons. Now we need to stick some missiles on them. I'm going to go for a couple of AMRAMs. These are the uh, radar guided missiles. And that's what we need our little radome for. I'm just going to click there. And you can extend the height or the length of your missile pylons. I'm just going to extend the height here to take them well clear of the wing. And then on the outer missile pylons, I'm going to get some sidewinders. These are the um, these are the heat seekers. You don't need a radar for these, uh, but be careful when you're using them, particularly if you're attaching them to the body um, or where anywhere that isn't just under the wings, because they yeah uh, they're one of these missiles that has a habit of uh, of actually just exploding the aircraft by flying into it after it's launched. 
The thing is, some of these missiles will just launch off the missile pylon, some of them will drop and then the engines will fire. The small missiles, like the Sidewinder and the Hellfires, will launch straight off the missile pylon. The Amrams and the Mavericks will drop a bit before they do so, and that can cause, not so much with the Hellfires, but the Sidewinders, that can cause them to collide with the craft if you're not careful. Also, we're going to need some defences for our aircraft, seeing as its, its opponents are also going to have missiles. So I'm going to take some chaff dispensers. Got symmetry on still, so I'm just going to put one either side. Let's get snapping back on. I'm just going to put a pair there, and I'm going to put a pair of flare dispensers there. Lovely stuff. You can set them up with hotkeys if you want to fly it yourself, but we're just going to be going and putting this into an autopilot uh, battle in a second. And I think that's everything. We have our heat seekers, we have our uh, radar guided, we've got our radar to guide them. We've got our missile defences in the form of the chaff and the flare dispensers. So let's go and uh, let's go set up a bit of a competition. Just before we get to the real death and destruction though, I thought it might be worthwhile to show you how all this works if you're doing it manually. So I'm just going to turn and face our hapless little other whirlwind. Uh, let's get the uh, let's get the AMRAM selected. We're going to want the inline radome. These are one of the modules. Click the module button, select the inline radome. We're going to coming up on it a bit fast. There's lots of little things here. Um, it really is worth taking your time to sort of familiarise yourself. Just play about with all these different options. Uh, now I could click on that and lock on the target that way, but instead I'm going to bring up the bore sight, which should give me a lock. Arm the missile, and off we go. Now that should hopefully find its mark. Ooh, didn't do too much damage. Let's switch to the sidewinders. And the sidewinders will automatically bring up this because it's not a, a radar guided missile. Let's see if this does any better. Come on. There we go. Normally the missiles will do more damage than that. I think I got a couple of unlucky hits, but we managed to knock out uh, the air intake and half the tailplane, which is enough to disable the craft and send it to its inevitable demise. Now anyway, let's um, let's get on with something a little bit bigger. So I've used Vessel Mover to line up three of these whirlwinds against three of my tiger tails. It's been a while since we've seen them, so uh, I thought uh, we'd drag them out of the closet. Um, also sort of one engine versus one engine kind of make it as even a fight as possible. Now, to start competitions like this, BD Armoury makes it ridiculously easy. Uh, here you get all the settings, just from bringing up the settings menu, but you also get the option to start a dogfight competition. You can set the competition distance there. Make sure your craft have their uh, engine started and just click. And there we go, everything will proceed with the AIs doing the legwork. And when they get to the prerequisite 8 kilometers, like now, they will turn and fight. Now, I honestly have no idea which way this is going to go. Um, I kind of just threw together the whirlwinds, whereas I spent a bit of time designing the tiger tails, so... Part of me wants the tiger tails to win for that reason, but I just I always want the new craft to win anyway. Some explosions going on there. Was that any of our craft? Nope, they're all flying okay. Now the uh, the whirlwinds are down to the sidewinders, so they're launching those. Although, um... oh, that was close. How did that not shred this craft? 
Um, yeah, the um, the sidewinders aren't particularly effective. Flares. Oh, okay, that did it. Yeah, that did it. Yeah, the sidewinders aren't particularly effective. The flares are very good at countering the sidewinders. They're a bit better than the chaff is at um, the chaff is at uh, countering the uh, amrams and the um, other radar guided missiles. Um, how are our other whirlwinds getting on? They're doing okay. The gunfight has definitely started. This whirlwind seems to be quite out of it though, which is bad news for his wingman who is under a lot of pressure at the moment. Gitten Kerman or Guyton Kerman. I think I'd probably pronounce it second way if I was her. But yeah, a lot of gunfire raining in. This is not looking good. Ooh, the possibility for a quick revenge kill presents itself though. Can Guyton Kerman get that quick kill? Doesn't look like it and now her wingman is in trouble and her, but her wingman is Jebediah. Surely if anyone can swing it round. Oh, what happened there? I missed that. One of the tiger tails got completely taken out or crashed into the ground or something. But Fergus Kerman will have to watch upside down from the sidelines. So it is two against two and Jebediah is laying guns into one of the tiger tails. That looks like that might have been a bit of a hit. Oh, tiger tail loses something. Jebediah gets a bit close and has to break off. Picks up the target again though. Lays guns in. Jebediah can get back on that Tiger Tail's tail. Uh, really shouldn't have chosen a craft name with the word tail in it. Never mind, anyway. Guyton Kerman looking pretty good as well. Also has guns on that Tiger Tail over... Oh! And this Tiger Tail... What has happened to you? You ran out of fuel... Oh! Your fuel tanks were blown off. It's now two against one. No, it is not two against one. Well, it sort of is two against one until Losted Kerman crashes or lands. But that is victory for the Whirlwinds. That was quite unexpected. The uh, the Whirlwinds taking advantage of the Tiger Tail's vulnerability with its with the, its external fuel tanks there. Just a matter of if Losted Kerman can actually survive to the ground. But anyway, that will uh, that will bring a close to today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've picked, learned something new. Um, I might do another one in the future, looking at sort of the ground attack side of things and the sort of anti-air defence. But um, oh, he's coming in for a landing. He's coming in for a landing. Not quite textbook, but it will do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time.